If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Martin Luther King Jr. The most important thing is taking action. The major difference between successful people and failures is that successful individuals are action-oriented while failures are not. I keep emphasizing this point and after studying it for 30, 40 years, I've consistently found that every study confirms it. Successful people are results-oriented and they are action-oriented. They know what they want and they take action. When you take action, only two things can happen. You either succeed or you fail. It's pretty straightforward. If you succeed, you continue doing more of it. If you fail, you learn something and try something else. Human beings are trial and failure organisms. We try, fail, try again, and keep learning and adapting. Phil Knight, the president of Nike Shoes, famously said, you only have to succeed the last time. If you examine the life stories of accomplished individuals, you'll discover that their journeys are filled with failures before they achieved outstanding success. Successful people try many things, and not all of their attempts work, at least not initially. The key is to keep trying because your brain is wired to learn from every attempt. Each time you try something, you learn something new. You discover what works and what doesn't work. Therefore, there is a direct correlation between the number of attempts you make and your likelihood of success. So, if you hear a good idea today, make a resolution to give it a try. The sooner you try, the sooner you'll learn and potentially succeed. Many years ago at a talk, I was speaking to Rich DeVos when he was on his way up. Rich DeVos, the president of Amway, who eventually became a billionaire, started off knocking on doors selling soap. I asked him what he had found to be the most important quality of successful. Fling you, fling you, fling you. And he told me something I'll never forget. Rich DeVos said, Brian, we found there's a direct relationship between how quickly a person takes action on a new idea and how likely it is they'll ever take action on any idea at all. He emphasized that an action-oriented mindset is the critical factor for success. We all hear the same ideas, but the speed at which someone takes action on those ideas significantly affects their chances of success, often increasing them by hundreds of percent. What most people tend to do is say, that's a great idea, I'm excited about it, I'll do that. However, instead of applying the idea right away, they decide to take a detour to a place called Someday Isle. On Someday Isle, they put off taking action indefinitely. It's a place where they're surrounded by others who also make excuses for not taking action. Conversations on Someday Isle are centered around sharing excuses for why they haven't pursued their goals yet. People on Someday Isle postpone taking action and live with their excuses. They have wonderful intentions and resolutions, but their journey is paved with good intentions that never materialize into action. So rule number one for success is to eliminate Someday Isle from your life. Make a decision. Either do it or don't do it, but don't linger in the land of someday. You know, I've often thought about the journey of success and one key element always stands out, the sheer force of will to get things done. It's like sailing a ship. You can have the finest vessel, the best crew, but without setting a course and pushing forward, you'll simply drift. Today, I wanna to talk about the art of pushing yourself, of moving beyond the ordinary to achieve the extraordinary. Think about the last time you really didn't want to do something. Maybe it was a tough conversation. Maybe it was a project that seemed insurmountable. We've all been there, haven't we? That moment where the easier choice is to say, I'll do it tomorrow. But here's the thing. Tomorrow becomes the next day, and the next, and soon enough, what was a molehill becomes a mountain. In these moments, the difference between success and stagnation is action. Action is the foundational key to all success. It's not just about having knowledge or talent. It's about using that knowledge, harnessing that talent. You could have the intellect of Einstein, but without action, it's like having a library of books that you never read. So how do we tap into this force? How do we push ourselves to take action, especially when it's tough? Well, that's the journey we're on together today. It's about understanding the why behind the what. It's about learning to embrace the discomfort of growth because growth and comfort do not coexist. I want you to think about a goal, a dream, something you've been putting off. Hold that in your mind as we embark on this discussion because today isn't just about theories and words. It's about transformation. It's about turning I can't into I will. 
And believe me, the journey from I can't to I will is where all the magic happens. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. If it were easy, everyone would be doing it. But I promise you, it will be worth it because on the other side of discipline, on the other side of that hard work, lies the life you've always dreamed of. A life where you are the master of your fate, not the victim of your circumstances. Begin this adventure together with open minds and willing hearts. Let's commit to ourselves, to our dreams, to the journey of forcing ourselves to get it done, no matter what. Remember, the only limits that exist are the ones we place on ourselves. Let's break those barriers and soar to new heights. It's not just about the goal, it's about who we become in the process of reaching that goal. It's about the strength we gain, the wisdom we acquire, and the character we build. Let's take this journey together, step by step, day by day, until we reach the pinnacle of our potential, the incredible power of self-discipline. Self-discipline is the silent engine that drives success. It's the inner strength that gets us out of bed on those cold mornings when the world seems to be against us. It's the force that keeps us going when everything else says stop. It's not just a trait, it's a way of life. Imagine for a moment a world where everyone exercised perfect self-discipline. Picture people following through on every promise they made. Imagine the achievements, the transformations. Now, I know what you're thinking. That world sounds ideal, perhaps too good to be true. But here's the secret. That world begins with you. It starts the moment you decide to take control of your life. You see, self-discipline is about taking responsibility. It's about making choices, not excuses. It's about saying no to the things that harm us and yes to the things that help us grow. It's about making a commitment to yourself and keeping it. It's easy to be disciplined when someone is watching but true self-discipline is what you do when no one is looking. It's the choices you make in those quiet, unseen moments that truly define who you are. What are the rewards of self-discipline? It's not just about getting things done. It's about the peace of mind that comes with knowing you're in control of your actions. It's the pride that comes from looking back at your day and realizing you did what you set out to do. It's the confidence that grows every time you keep a promise to yourself. This confidence, my friends, is priceless. It spills over into every aspect of your life, lighting it up like the morning sun. However, self-discipline is also a challenge. It's a muscle that needs constant exercise, and just like any muscle, it can tire, it can feel strained, but that's just a sign that it's growing stronger. Each time you push through the temptation to give up, you're not just moving one step closer to your goal, you're also building your self-discipline muscle. You're teaching yourself that you can do hard things, that you can overcome challenges, and this in itself is a victory. Think about the last time you really pushed yourself when you went beyond your comfort zone. Maybe it was working on a project late into the night or perhaps it was saying no to a temptation that would have derailed your progress. How did you feel afterward? Exhausted maybe, but also exhilarated, right? That feeling, that's the power of self-discipline. So self-discipline also means being able to delay gratification. It's about seeing the bigger picture, understanding that the pain of discipline now is nothing compared to the pain of regret later. It's about choosing long-term satisfaction over short-term comfort. This is where many falter, mistaking the easy road for the right road, but not you. You're here because you're ready to choose the right road, no matter how challenging it may be. Remember, self-discipline doesn't mean living a life of restriction. It means living a life of balance. It's about knowing when to work hard and when to rest, when to push yourself and when to recharge. It's about listening to your body, your mind, and your heart. It's about harmony. When you master self-discipline, you're not just mastering a skill, you're mastering life itself. And be clear, 
Mastering self-discipline doesn't mean you'll never fail or falter. We're all human after all. It's about how you respond to those failures. Do you let them defeat you or do you use them as stepping stones to greater success? Every setback, every obstacle is an opportunity to practice self-discipline, to get back up, dust yourself off, and move forward with even more determination. With self-discipline, there's nothing we can't achieve. No dream too big, no goal too distant. As we wrap up this part of our discussion, I want you to hold on to the idea that self-discipline is your strength and your guide. It's the light that leads you through the darkness, the force that pushes you when the road gets tough. Embrace it, nurture it, and watch as it transforms your life in ways you never imagined. Procrastination and laziness, they're like quicksand. The more we give in, the deeper we sink, and the harder it becomes to pull ourselves out. Now think about it. How often have we said, I'll start tomorrow, only to find that tomorrow brings its own set of excuses. It's a cycle, a dangerous loop that spins us around and keeps us from moving forward. But here's the good news. Just as we can fall into the cycle, we can also break free from it. The key, action. Immediate, deliberate action. It's the antidote to procrastination, the enemy of lasinus. Now, I know what you're thinking, but it's hard to start. And you're right, it is hard. Starting is often the hardest part. But remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. It's about taking that first small step. It doesn't have to be a leap, just a step. The magic lies in the momentum you create once you start. It's like pushing a car. The initial push takes all your might but once it starts rolling, it gets easier. So, how do we start? First, by setting clear, achievable goals. Goals that excite us, that ignite a fire within us. When your goal is clear, your focus sharpens and procrastination loses its power. Then, break these goals into smaller, manageable tasks. So small that it seems almost ridiculous not to do them. It's about tricking the mind, making the task seem so easy, so doable, that procrastination has no room to creep in. And what about laziness? Laziness thrives in the absence of a compelling why. You need a why that's so powerful, so compelling, that it pulls you out of the comfort of inaction. Your why should be like a beacon, guiding you through the fog of laziness, reminding you of the bigger picture, the reason you're doing what you're doing. But remember, it's not just about the external goals, it's also about respecting yourself. Every time you overcome procrastination, every time you choose action over inaction, you're building self-respect. You're telling yourself, I am worth the effort. My dreams are worth the effort. And believe me, there's no feeling quite like looking in the mirror and knowing you've kept a promise to yourself. That's the kind of self-respect that builds empires, that changes lives. Also, our environment plays a crucial role in overcoming procrastination and laziness. Surround yourself with reminders of your goals, with people who inspire you to act. Create an environment that encourages productivity, one that makes it easier to start and harder to quit. Remember, our surroundings often shape our actions. Make yours a breeding ground for success. A solid, well-structured routine can be a fortress against the onslaught of procrastination and laziness. When you have a routine, you don't need to waste energy deciding what to do next. It's already laid out for you. This frees up mental space for creativity and productivity. Overcoming these challenges is not just about brute force. It's also about understanding the root cause. Ask yourself, why am I procrastinating? What am I avoiding? Often, procrastination is a symptom of fear. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of stepping out of our comfort zone. Address these fears, confront them, and you'll find that procrastination loses its grip on you. And in those moments when you do fall prey to procrastination or laziness, don't be too hard on yourself. Remember, we're all human. 
The key is not to dwell in that space. Acknowledge it, learn from it, and then step back into action with renewed vigor. Celebrate your victories, no matter how small. Every task completed, every moment of laziness overcome is a victory. Celebrate these, cherish them. They are the stepping stones to greater successes. It becomes clear that the building blocks of success are often the smallest ones. I'm talking about habits. Yes, habits, those little routines, those daily acts that we do almost without thinking. They might seem insignificant on their own, but cumulatively, they hold the power to transform our lives. This is where personal growth either blossoms or withers. You see, habits are like the threads in a tapestry. Each thread might seem inconsequential, but together they create a picture of our lives. The quality of our habits determines the quality of that picture. Good habits lead to a life of strength and beauty, while bad habits lead to a life that, like a poorly woven tapestry, can easily come undone. Think about this. How many of our days are spent on autopilot? We wake up, go through our routines, and before we know it, the day is gone. Now imagine if those routines, those habits, were all designed to propel you towards your goals. That's the power of intentional habit formation. But how do we form good habits? It starts with awareness. You must first become a keen observer of your own life. Ask yourself, what are my current habits? Are they serving me or holding me back? This level of self-awareness is the first step towards meaningful change. Once you've identified the habits you need to change, it's about starting small. Too often we try to overhaul our lives overnight. That's like trying to lift a weight too heavy for us. It's unsustainable. Instead, start with small, manageable changes. Want to exercise more? Start with a 10-minute walk each day, not an hour at the gym. Small successes build momentum, and momentum leads to bigger successes. But forming new habits isn't just about doing. It's also about unlearning. It's about breaking the chains of old, unproductive habits. This is where discipline comes in, the same discipline we talked about earlier. It's about making choices that align with your new goals, even when it's uncomfortable. Remember, comfort is often the enemy of growth. And speaking of growth, let's not forget the role of consistency. Consistency is the secret ingredient in habit formation. It's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives, but what we do consistently. This might mean making small sacrifices like waking up earlier or turning off the TV to focus on a project. These sacrifices might seem significant in the moment, but in the grand scheme of things, they're the price of success. Forming new habits is not just a solo journey. Surround yourself with people who embody the habits you want to adopt. We are, after all, social creatures, and we're heavily influenced by those around us. If you're surrounded by disciplined, focused individuals, it's much easier to adopt those traits yourself. And remember, habits don't just impact our actions, they shape our identity. Every time you practice a good habit, you're not just getting closer to your goal. You're also telling yourself, this is who I am. You're building an identity as someone who takes action, who values discipline, who strives for excellence. This identity becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, propelling you forward. But honestly, change is hard. Old habits die hard, they say. There will be days when you'll falter, when the old ways will beckon. In those moments, it's crucial to remember why you started. Reflect on your goals, your dreams, your vision for your life. Remind yourself that every habit, no matter how small, is a step towards that vision. And when you do slip up, don't beat yourself up. Growth is not a linear journey. It's a series of ups and downs, successes and setbacks. What matters is not that you stumbled, but that you have the courage to get back up. Each time you do, you're strengthening your resolve, your discipline, your commitment to your new habits. Now let's talk about the power of routine. 
A solid routine can serve as a framework for your habits. It gives your day structure, a rhythm that makes it easier to incorporate new habits and discard old ones. Think of it as scaffolding for your life. As you build new habits, this scaffolding supports you, guiding you upwards towards your goals. And as you work on building these habits, be patient with yourself. Habits are not formed overnight. They require time, repetition, and persistence. But the rewards are worth the effort. Imagine waking up one day and realizing that the habits you once struggled with are now second nature. That's a sign of true personal growth. Embrace the power of habits. Let's recognize them as the tools they are, tools that can build us up or tear us down. Let's choose our habits wisely, cultivate them with care, and watch as they transform our lives one day at a time. So, as we wrap up this part of our discussion, hold on to the thought that your habits are shaping your future right now. The choices you make, the routines you follow, they're writing the story of your life. Let's write a story of success, of growth, of becoming the best version of ourselves. With the right habits, there's no limit to what we can achieve. Let's continue to build those habits step by step, day by day, until they lead us to the life we've always dreamed of. As we navigate the landscape of habit formation and personal growth, we inevitably encounter challenges. It's as if life tests our new habits, our newfound discipline at every turn. But here's a perspective I'd like us to consider. What if, instead of viewing challenges as obstacles, we see them as opportunities, opportunities to grow, to learn, to become even stronger? You see, challenges are a natural part of life. They're like the weights in a gym. Without lifting them, we cannot grow stronger. When we face a challenge, we're presented with a choice, to retreat in fear or to embrace it as an opportunity. Each time we choose to face a challenge head on, we're not just overcoming that particular obstacle. We're building resilience, honing our problem-solving skills and stretching the boundaries of our capabilities. Think about some of the greatest achievements in history, in science, in art, in business. Were they born out of comfort and ease? No. They were born out of challenge, out of the need to solve a problem, to overcome a hurdle. It's in the crucible of challenge that greatness is forged. But how do we turn challenges into opportunities? It starts with mindset. A challenge viewed through the lens of fear and doubt is a barrier. The same challenge viewed through the lens of growth and learning becomes an opportunity. It's about asking, what can I learn from this? How can this make me better? Let me share a secret with you. The most successful people are not those who never face challenges. They are the ones who face them, learn from them, and use them as stepping stones to higher ground. They understand that on the other side of every challenge lies an opportunity to advance, to improve, to emerge stronger and wiser. I won't sugarcoat it. Facing challenges head on is not easy. It requires courage, determination, and the willingness to step out of your comfort zone. But remember, the greatest growth often happens right at the edge of our comfort zones. When you push yourself beyond what you thought was possible, that's where you find not just success, but fulfillment as well. Another key to turning challenges into opportunities is adaptability. In a world that's constantly changing, the ability to adapt is invaluable. When faced with a challenge, ask yourself, how can I approach this differently? What new strategies can I employ? Flexibility in thought and action allows you to navigate challenges more effectively, turning what seem like roadblocks into stepping stones. It's also important to embrace support. No one achieves greatness alone. When faced with challenges, lean on your network mentors, colleagues, and friends. Their wisdom, experience, and encouragement can be the catalyst you need to transform challenges into victories. And don't forget the power of reflection. After facing the challenge, take a moment to reflect. What worked? What didn't? What did you learn? 
Reflection turns experience into insight, and insight is the key to turning future challenges into opportunities. As we move forward, let's carry this understanding with us. Challenges are not just hurdles to be cleared, but opportunities to be embraced. They are the crucibles in which our greatest selves are forged. Every challenge you overcome carves a little more of the masterpiece that is your life. Remember, diamonds are formed under pressure, and so are the strongest aspects of our character. So approach challenges with a sense of anticipation, not trepidation. Let's look at them as questions waiting to be answered, puzzles waiting to be solved. And as we solve them, let's celebrate the growth they bring. Let's acknowledge our progress and use it to fuel our journey forward. Challenges are an inevitable part of life, but how we respond to them defines our journey. They can be roadblocks or they can be stepping stones. The choice is ours. Choose to see them as opportunities to demonstrate our resilience, our adaptability, our growth. With this mindset, there is no challenge too great, no obstacle too daunting. Together, let's embrace our challenges, transform them into opportunities, and in doing so, transform ourselves. As we stand at the threshold of this new beginning, let's embrace the essence of what we've discussed. It's not just about the words spoken or the ideas shared, but about the actions we take from here. This is your moment, a moment for action for stepping boldly into the life you've envisioned. It's about taking everything we've learned and putting it into practice. Your journey, unique and full of potential, is waiting for you. It's a path that only you can walk, but you don't walk it alone. Think of the lessons we've shared as companions on this journey, guiding you, supporting you. The power of self-discipline, the mastery over procrastination and laziness, the strength of positive habits, and the ability to transform challenges into opportunities are your allies on this remarkable journey ahead. These are your tools, your allies. What step can you take today, however small, that will move you closer to your goals? It might be setting a new goal, making a plan, or simply deciding to break free from old patterns. Whatever it is, the important thing is to start. Take that step with confidence and conviction. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Keep your eyes on the horizon, your dreams, your aspirations. They are not just fanciful hopes, they are destinations waiting to be reached. And every step you take, no matter how small, is a step closer to those destinations. Embrace the journey with all its twists and turns. Each step each challenge, each triumph is shaping you into the person you are meant to be. It's in the doing, the striving, the overcoming that we truly grow. So embrace the process, embrace the journey, and most importantly, embrace the growth that comes with it. Celebrate your victories, learn from your setbacks, and always keep your eyes fixed on your goals. The path to success is not a straight line, it's a winding road filled with learning opportunities. Embrace these opportunities, for they are the experiences that will lead you to greatness. I urge you to hold on to the sense of purpose and passion that brought you here today. Let it be the fire that drives you forward, the light that guides your path. You have within you the strength, the determination, the resilience to overcome any obstacle and reach any summit. Believe in yourself and your ability to make a difference in your life and the lives of those around you. Bear in mind, this is not the end, but a beautiful beginning. A beginning of a life lived with intention, purpose, and a relentless pursuit of excellence. Carry these lessons with you. Let them be the wind in your sails, propelling you towards your dreams. So go forth from here with a heart full of courage and a mindset on action. The world is waiting for your unique contributions, your dreams, your passion. You have everything you need to create the life you desire. It's time to take action, to make those dreams a reality. The journey ahead is yours to shape. Thank you for sharing this time with me.
Now, let's go out there and make it happen. Your incredible journey awaits, and I can't wait to see where it takes you. Here's to your success, to your growth, and to the amazing life you're going to build. Let's make it a journey to remember.